Hi, I'm Jeff Lowe, Chief Executive Officer of Asian Sky Group and Asian Sky Media, here to give you an overview of our year-end 2020 Civil Helicopter Fleet Report. The report was actually released last week, so you can certainly go to our website and download it, www.asianskymedia.com, or as I said, I'm here to give you uh, an overview of what was in that report. I'd like to especially thank our contributors at this point in time, that's Bell, JSSI, LCI, Oceana Aviation, Pratt & Whitney, Russian Helicopters, Ascent, Blade, and EHOM. For those that are tuning in for the first time, Asian Sky Media is an award-winning award media company in the Asia Pacific region. Uh, we've been awarded Best Media now for four years in a row. We produce a number of B2B and B2C publications and also are the official media partners for a number of trade shows and conferences in the region. On to the report itself, and again, I emphasize it is the Civil Turbine Helicopter Fleet Report. Uh, for pistons, you need to go to our GA report, which will come out later in the year. Looking at the Asia Pacific region as a whole, probably not really a bad result for 2020, in that we were able to maintain the same growth rate that we had in 2019, despite the fact that we were, you know, this was achieved during a pandemic. So 1.8% growth through 2020, with a net 78 helicopters added. As I said, this matched 2019, and when you look back through 2014, this looks this results in a compound growth of 3.6%. We don't think that the, grew, the, the region will be able to maintain that growth rate through 2021. Again, as we recover through, continue to recover through the pandemic, and also we're seeing new aircraft deliveries, sorry, new helicopter deliveries, and new and pre-owned deliveries still diminishing. So we still think 2020 is gonna be affected by the pandemic, and so we're forecasting a growth of only half a percent. Looking at it on a country by country basis, you can see where the big, the big fleets are, Japan, South Korea, China, India, Australia, New Zealand. Australia represents the biggest market, but the market that added the most net air helicopters was mainland China, plus 55. And where we saw the largest deduction of helicopters, that was in Papua New Guinea, and that was uh, due to, if you will, uh, reductions in the oil and gas uh, contracts in that region, and also an aging fleet requirement, where we had a number of significant uh, retirements as well. All in all, as I said, the same growth rate as through 2019, so the fleet as a whole represented 4,385 civil turbine helicopters. Looking that on a more on a regional basis, again, the fleet leader, if you will, was Greater China, adding a net 55 helicopters. This was an increase over 2019. They still maintained their position as number one, but you can see also they managed to increase their growth rate from 6 to 7%. Oceana, Australia, New Zealand certainly added a significant number of helicopters as well, plus 17 versus 2019. So they were able to increase their growth rate now at a positive 1%. All the other regions, East Asia, South Asia, Southeast Asia, all saw their growth rates decline with Southeast Asia itself contracting 2%. But as mentioned, all in all, growth rate of 1.8% and adding a net 78 helicopters in the Asia Pacific region. By OEM, Airbus continues to be the dominant OEM in the region, uh, and it was able to uh, continue its growth in the region, and at the same rate it had in 2019, of 1%. Same for Bell, it uh, is able to continue its growth, mirroring again 2019 as well with 3% growth. Leonardo was positive in the growth as well, but not as, it's not as, if you will, aggressive or as high as it was in 2019, so it saw its growth decline. MD Helicopters managed to add some aircraft in the region, which brought it back to the positive growth side, but Sikorsky declines. Russian Helicopters, again, held its own as well at 4% growth, and then the rest, Robinson, Avic, Anstrom, and others. If you look at the mission type, utility uh, remains the largest component of the market here in the Asia Pacific region, followed by VIP. Both of those two categories, if you will, mission requirements, 
we're able to maintain positive growth. Certainly utility adding at 4%, which was a doubling of their rate in 2019. And VIP, surprisingly actually, able to maintain its positive growth rate of 2%. The others, law enforcement, offshore EMS, SARS, and training, all had declines uh, as far as their percentage of the fleet. Not too surprising given the dominance of the utility sector, it's not too surprising then to see that single engine, uh, single turbine engine helicopters also dominated the fleet, uh, then followed by medium, light twins, and heavies. Uh, most of these segments all performed in the positive side of things except for the mediums and the super mediums, which both saw declines as far as the rate of growth of those categories. Singles grew at a percent at a rate of 2%, light twins at 2%, and heavies at 4%. As mentioned earlier, you've got really the three top OEMs and they dominate the market, Airbus, Bell, and Leonardo. Combined, they represent 80% of the market, and likewise, when you look at the replacement cost. The other, if you will, follows on, follow-ons from that being really just MD helicopters, Sikorsky, and Russian helicopters. Utility, as I mentioned, dominates the market 58%, followed by VIP at 16 And then when you look at size, singles represent the market uh, 53%, followed by mediums at 23 and the light twins at 18 As we mentioned earlier, the fleet uh, grew a net 78. How that's broken down is you had 98 new aircraft, new helicopter deliveries in the region. You had 93 pre-owned helicopter additions, but then you also had 113 deductions for a net 78. All of these additions and deductions were a reduction based on what happened in 2019 and actually further represents further declines uh, for what, from what we saw in 2018 as well. New aircraft deliveries, uh, new helicopter deliveries and pre-owned helicopter deliveries have been declining now for three years in a row and in some cases we saw a spike in deductions in 2019 but again we're back to 2018 levels as far as, as deductions with about 113 from the region as well. It's always worth noting that the net 78 represents helicopters that left or came into the Asia-Pacific region as a whole, there's also a lot of activity that goes on within the APAC region where helicopters are moving from country to country, and that's where this intra-APAC relocation number comes. So again, you can see that there's not a much, as much movement happening within the Asia-Pacific region as well either. So here's how we come up with the, the 78 net helicopter additions. If we look at it on an OEM basis, as mentioned, Airbus ranks as number one. It uh, added a net 18 helicopters through the year for a 1% growth. Its most popular model in the Asia Pacific region is the 125, and its largest market is Japan with 352 helicopters. Bell is in the number two position. It added a net 39 uh, helicopters for the highest growth rate of 3.4%. Its most popular model is the 206, and its largest market is Australia with 378. Leonardo number three, adding just a net six airplanes, but a growth of 1.3%. Its most popular model is the 139, and again, Japan, Japan being its biggest market with 119 helicopters. MD added two for a growth of 0.8%. Uh, most popular model is the 500, and its largest market is New Zealand with 106. Sikorsky contracting, uh, continuing to see more and more Sikorsky helicopters leaving the region. So it had a net decline of three, so for a minus 1.4%. Yes, part of that you can see is driven by the fact that its most popular mono model is the 76C++, which is not in high demand these days. And China and Korea represents their biggest markets, both with 44. Last but certainly not least, Russian helicopters. Russian helicopters ranked at number six, added a net seven helicopters through the year through a growth, for a growth rate of 4.4%. Uh, the 
comma 32 remains the most popular model and south korea uh, is the most uh, if you will the biggest market for them with 62 airplanes breaking it down looking at the new air the new deliveries and pre-owned deliveries and deductions by model you can see why bell did well through the year when it came to new deliveries certainly the 407 and the 505 both being number one and number two when it comes when it comes to which models were delivered the most in the region. So that then looks on a mission basis, 65% of the new aircraft were delivered in a utility configuration with VIP then being another 11. So a total of 98 new aircraft deliveries. And as you can see, Bell represented 40% of those deliveries with Airbus being 26. Pre-owned additions, always a different story. 125 from Airbus and also the 225 from Airbus. It's nice to see the 225, if you will, fleet growing in the region again. Um, but the rest being 139s, uh, 117s, 206s, and the 145. But the two big ones being the 125 and the 225. So when you look at the mission breakdown for the pre owned editions, again, utility representing 76% and VIP 17%, Airbus at 50% of the pre-owned market, followed by Bell at 26%. So pre-owned additions for helicopters being a total of 93. Deductions, Airbus, if you will, Leonardo and Bell, if you will, nobody escaped. Everyone's had their, had their own, if you will, fleet deductions through, through the year. Uh, Airbus with the 125, Leonardo with the 139 and Bell with the 206. Again, mostly utility configured aircraft, 55%. But now you're seeing for the first time uh, in the deductions, the offshore, which represents 20% and then EMS. So when it comes to deduction, we're certainly not seeing the same amount that we saw on new deliveries and pre-owned deliveries regarding VIP, for instance. So those deductions are coming from utility, but also you're seeing offshore and EMS now. The big, biggest deductions were from Airbus, 47%, Bell, 20 and then Leonardo at 15 Looking at the operators in the region, uh, the top 10. Uh, of those top 10, five of them are, are Chinese operators, COHC, King Wing, Shaanxi Helicopter, State Grid, and Rainwood. Uh, you can see on the right uh, with the bars, some had uh, good years and, and some had more challenging years. Certainly COH, COHC, which is primarily in the offshore business, and that business has recovered nicely in China, added aircraft. But then if you go down and you look at King Wing, whose primary business is EMS, you can see that uh, there's certainly some, shall we say, correction ongoing in the EMS market in China. And so they are, their, their fleet is down 10. Uh, on the next, on the right side, you can see the other top 20, uh, top 11 operators. So we've got the top 21 on the page. Again, significant number of Chinese operators, but also a bit more of a, a mix from across the Asia Pacific region with Vietnam, India, and also Malaysia being featured now. As always in the fleet report, we have a number of special sections and, and this year's report is, is no different. Uh, I encourage you again to go and download the report itself. I'm just gonna touch on those special sections, but each one obviously is in more detail in the report itself. Uh, so we have a special section which looks at the fleet of leasing of leased helicopters in the region. Uh, not a good story here for the leasing companies in that the leased fleet continued to contract through 2020 and increased that rate almost well, more than doubled it versus 2019. So we saw the leased fleet contract 3.5%. Uh, the big losers as far as the, the, the number of leased aircraft, again, PNG, so Papua New Guinea, but then you can also see that New Zealand and China were also contributors in that as far as those fleet reductions. The biggest fleet addition came in Australia. So a special feature on leasing. Top lessors for the Asia Pacific fleet, Milestone with 38% of the market, Airwork 19, and then LCI at 
So as we've signed up, kind of seen throughout the whole report, the top three really representing about 80% of the market again. Special feature on EMS, which is a key market in the Asia Pacific region. Again, dominant markets for EMS in Japan, China, and Australia, but really uh, not a good year as far as the fleet. Uh, no growth whatsoever, so zero. Um, so the fleet was stagnant. Uh, so that, I think, in anyone's uh, estimation, would be not a good result for what has always been sort of a targeted market in the Asia Pacific region, EMS. Offshore, probably the good story here is it, is it wasn't as bad as it was before. Um, certainly, as we all know, the oil price had a rough ride through 2020, but has bounced back to where it's currently sitting around $60, $65 a barrel. So that has allowed for certain recoveries to take place. So certainly the contraction that we had seen in 2019 of 6% has been reduced down, down to 2.9%. And a lot of that is coming from where we saw the most fleet addition, which was in mainline China. So certainly the oil and gas industry in China is, if you will, back up and running and adding airplanes. But certainly when you look down at Oceania, Papua New Guinea, Australia, again, those seeing more uh, retractions contractions within the offshore fleet in, in those areas. There's a key section in the report on the offshore wind market. Again, this is a key market for, for I guess, for, for all the OEMs and operators. Certainly, uh, it holds a lot of promise and included in the report is an excerpt from a much more detailed report that was done by Air and Sea Analytics. And they forecasted over the next 10 years, you're going to see nearly 100 helicopters that are needed to uh, support and service this, this upcoming market, the wind market. So interesting uh, section that we've added into the report this year. I certainly encourage you to go to take a look at that then, again, it being a key market. Can't forget about the propulsion guys, if you will. There's a special section uh, on the engine manufacturers, and that's pretty much dominated by the top three, Safran, Pratt, and Rolls. Um, they all continue to, uh, you know, have positive growth and through 2020, uh, maybe not as good as 2019 in some cases, but certainly, as I said, all being positive. So fast, Safran continued to grow its engine fleet by 8.8%, Pratt by 1.9%, and then Rolls by 2%. So when you look at it on a market share, Safran has 35% of the market, followed by Pratt at 29, and then Rolls at 24. So between that top three, you've got pretty much 85% or more of the market being represented. With any kind of report you do these days, you really can't avoid uh, talking about COVID. I mean, it's uh, obviously we've all had to manage our, our own businesses through the pandemic. Certainly, we talked to a number of operators, uh, a number of OEMs, lessors throughout the region to get their inputs back on what the impact has been for them. On the operator side, it certainly seems that uh, the tourism and the charter markets were probably the hardest hit by COVID, uh, whereas more essential services were less affected. So when you look at agriculture, industrial EMS services, a lot of these services were able to maintain, if you will, keep their head above water. But uh, when it comes to those more, if you know, personal private services, tourism and charter service, they were se severely impacted by, by COVID. But having said all that, talking to the operators, most of them remain very positive about the market going forward and certainly for 2021 as well. On the OEM side, uh, the, good si the good side of the story here, whereas most OEMs were able to continue to deliver the helicopters out of the factory, uh, we all found ways to continue to do that, but obviously with the pandemic hanging, hanging over everyone and the economic impact of that, uh, the new orders were not uh, up to, I guess, expectations from the OEMs in 2020. So certainly I think most of the OEMs saw less new aircraft orders, but certainly they were able to keep the delivery rate up. Having said all that, again, the OEMs remain quite positive looking forward, certainly on the short term, 2020 and even feel more positive over the long term. And again, their eye, uh, new markets, 
certainly wind, but also EMS law enforcement, disaster management, and search and rescue as well. So those are the key markets all the OEMs are focusing on. Talking to the lessors, again, they had to be accommodating uh, through 2020, uh, be flexible. Uh, in some, some cases, this meant uh, having reductions in their lease rates to help their clients get through the pandemic or actually giving people, if you will, uh, delays as far as uh, lease payments as well. So that in the end impacted them as well economically, but it certainly seems that most have come through the 2020 in, in, in good shape. Likewise, uh, they feel very optimistic about the future and certainly the 2021 and beyond. So even though it uh, was a tough 2020, uh, everyone, like I said, seems fairly optimistic about the market as a whole and where we'll be in 2021 and beyond. The last special feature we had is on uh, urban air mobility and EV tolls. We have as part of the uh, report this year a number of contributions. We had an interview with Ehong where they discussed uh, urban air mobility, particularly in China, and also the promise that this market has for them. We had the pleasure of also having a contribution from Blade and from Stephen Cugliari from their corporate development side. And he talks about their short-term and long-term challenges that they face. And then we also have a profile about uh, their operation in India, Blade India. And last but not least, we also have a contribution or an article from Ascent and where they discuss the democratization of access to air mobility. So certainly some interesting features, particularly on urban air mobility. So please take a look at those. Last but not least, we've got some company profiles and some product spotlights. On the company profile side, Chris Lloyd from LCI kind of discusses their advantages in Asia and what they've had to deal with over the last 12 months and where they see things are going to be in the next 12 months, if you will, the future. Oceania Aviation in New Zealand talks about infrastructure and uh, maintenance, repair, and overhaul. We always can't forget about infrastructure. Uh, Pratt Whitney uh, talks about their 90-year history, yes, 90-year history in China, and as a result, their commitment to that China market. And we also have Mark Windsor from JSI talking about specifically their rotary programs and the benefits uh, when it comes to the maintenance programs that they have. As I said, last but not least, we've got a couple of product spotlights. For me, it's a bit of a, the beauty and the beast. Uh, the Bell 505, which is just a beautiful looking airplane, uh, versus the Lakamov 32, which uh, I have to say is an ugly beast, but boy, it certainly gets the job done. That aircraft can pretty much do everything. Um, carry five tons of, uh, if you will, of whatever underneath it in a sling, but at the same time has over a hundred different configurations for, for, for that helicopter. So very interesting spotlight on the, the Kamov 32 from Russian helicopters. So that's the overview of the report. Again, I strongly encourage you to go to the website and download the report. It's certainly available there. And that is again, www.asianskymedia.com. Uh, I can encourage you to continue to go back to the website. Uh, we will be continuing to feed more information about the civil helicopter market uh, onto the website. And certainly that will be in the form of country profiles that will be coming out re uh, shortly. Country profiles give even, even more in-depth look at each country within the Asia Pacific region. So I certainly encourage you to go back and, and visit the website. Thank you very much for tuning in and hope all is well. Thanks.